G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a Furious Light Machine Gun. So, the Buzzsaw, and I'm not going to say whose Buzzsaw, has made an appearance in Fallout 76 as a heavy weapon. That's why I'm testing it on my strength character, as you probably saw by the thumbnail. And we're getting about 12 damage with this. Everything is stock. I think the only thing you can change about this is the um, receiver, which we'll get to a little bit later. But still, let's go ahead and get ourselves some perks. So, we're using the basic thing where we go... Three heavy gunners, we've also got um, lock and load and bullet shield for a little bit of um, extra viability with this. Bullet shield will just give us a little bit more resistance, just a bit of 20 DT. No energy resistance, which is kind of odd. And lock and load will get us to reload faster and to boost our damage ever so slightly more. We'll chuck on bloody mess, which gives us 22 damage per bullet, which um, this thing does fire 308, so we're going to get through them very, very quickly. And um, I'm going to be very surprised if we have any 308s left by the end of the video. So similarly to the minigun, this thing does chew up a lot of ammo. Unfortunately, this thing does do a little bit more damage than the standard one per bullet, although the, it's worth noting the minigun has a higher rate of fire. But there's no spin-up time. That barrel is going to get hot because it's the only thing the bullets are going to be going through, but I don't think that's a mechanic in this game, so I think we'll be fine. Alrighty, so here we are outside of Mutyville, the new certified Captain Noob testing area, and this is what it looks like in third person. We're going to be using this in Power Armor shortly, but let's just get a start off without Stabilize just to see how well we go. So, the DPS on this appears to be heaps, but um, yeah, we're just firing 308s like they're nothing. Like, if you... Wow, okay. Didn't expect him to die when he did, but I'm glad he did, and now he is dead. So, yeah. Apparently, we're stealth commandoing with this, because we're getting um, sneak attack criticals ever so often, and that's the reload speed, by the way, with locked and loaded. It looks like there's concentrations with this, which is actually kind of awesome. It's kind of weird, but whatever. So, performance-wise, we seem to be doing okay so far. No problems with it, although I'm going to have to keep watching my ammo counter to make this thing actually use the whole time, so yeah. Speaking of adrenaline, we'll just take a moment to just being shot at. So we're at 41 damage now with probably what is 60 adrenaline, so there you go. Nothing too bad there. And yeah, the more we get shot, the more strength we get any anyway, so that's fine. We're just going to have to repair that armor a little bit later. I've also lost um, marsupial because I got ghoul aids and then um, I cured myself of ghoul aids and that took away marsupial, which is really annoying. Okay, we're in power armor now. I'm just gonna reapply some of these perks to make sure they actually work. So, lock and load, obviously, because sometimes you can tell when the reload speed is slower. And to make sure this thing doesn't break on me, not that it will break, this thing actually does have pretty good durability, considering we're shooting through the only, the one barrel. Oh yeah, I'm being shot at. I'm gonna take out these guys and uh, we'll see how we go. So apparently this thing shoots incredibly fast. It's shooting so fast that the health bars are kind of lagging out, which is pretty good. Also, ammo check. 3,200. Not running through them exceptionally fast. This thing does seem to have a little bit more DPS in the minigun. That is a bad legendary effect for a pipe bolt action rifle. But still, we'll move on to this super mutant here. And you're going to be running through these 75 bullets in that drum very, very quickly. So locked and loaded, despite having a large magazine, is kind of essential when you're using this type of weapon. We'll move on inside. Okay, so the ground's on fire in front of me, which isn't a good sign for the super mutants. Anyways, using this thing in bats is a little bit... You blink your eye and then your action points are gone. So honestly, I wouldn't recommend it. If you were to chuck anything in luck with this build, I definitely would chuck on something like... Um, lucky break or something like uh, luck of the draw just something to keep your equipment in good condition as you're using it since this is a loud and proud weapon you're going to be shot at quite a lot from basically all sides because it's a loud weapon it's it's a buzzsaw everybody knows where this thing is because it's just so loud and what that means is you're going to get shot quite a lot it ain't like stealthing around with a suppressed handmade rifle this is like the grognak of ballistic weapons. I do like the tracers. The tracers are really cool. I am hip firing this thing quite a lot, and that is due to stabilize helping me out so much. But the recoil on this thing is somewhat manageable. You'll notice that there is a significant pull up when compared to other vanilla game weapons, but nothing that can't be countered with a little bit of mouse maneuvering. 
Obviously trying to zero in on the face of these guys is going to get you a whole lot more damage. And I think we killed that guy in under <laughs> 25 bullets or something. So, you know, that's alright. Right now my hunting rifle is laughing at me for the amount of bullets I'm shooting compared to the amount of damage I'm getting. I've got that running through my mind constantly. See, Winter could use these with a instigating hunting rifle a lot more efficient than what uh, Miranda can use her um, furious light machine gun in, but uh, so far so good. That's some nice impacts that'll recover the ones that I've lost from this place. Looks like the control room has cleared out. Looks like we've only got that other wing to clear out. This is the way we'll take. This is the way the super mutants are coming from, so we'll take them out like that. Obviously, keeping our adrenaline topped up at all times is a great way to maintain damage and also to save ammo. And <laughs> yeah, despite this spitting out 308s faster than you can blink or faster than you can even think. This thing is tearing this place apart very, very easily. So kind of happy about that. If it was doing less damage than what a minigun would, I'd be very pleased or unhappy with this weapon. I guess it's because um, it doesn't have a spin-up time. It, it makes it feel like it's a lot faster of a weapon. Just getting those bullets firing as soon as you pull the trigger is something that um, really, really is significant. Something you kind of take for granted when using stuff like miniguns or Gatling lasers, but it's actually really, really useful just to have that on-demand bullet hosing like this thing does. So, yeah, not too um, unimpressed. We'll have a quick check of our ammo. We're down to 2300. Condition is holding. Con this thing is incredibly durable. This is kind of like the 10mm submachine gun of the heavy weapons. It's just durable. Really, really durable for no bloody well explain, explained reason. Explained reason, sure. I'll just uh, say explained when I splatter their brains all over the floor. Okay, that was a waste of bullets there. Kind of outpaced that health regeneration. It's so weird getting the traces. You never see that with any other guns in this game, do you? And there we go. We'll probably just pack, uh, pop another stim pack um, on our own there, because I'm pretty sure these guys are killing us pretty easily. Luckily, we are in power armor. That gives us the tanky edge we need to actually survive all of these super mutants. So, yep, we'll pop up this end of the floor. Is anyone around here? I think we're almost clear. I'll have one last sweep of the area. Ah, uh, yep, just a pair of muties over there, as well as a couple of ones behind me, I feel like. Also, I'm not as reload happy with this weapon. I guess it's because I've just got a big drum there wagging around in my face, and I don't really know. Well, I guess it makes me think in my mind that I don't need to reload this, but still, keep a watch on that ammo supply. You'll go through it quickly. You don't want to get yourself into a situation where you need to reload and you have multiple guys shooting at you. We'll hunt down the last couple of things, and then we'll be out of here. Here's another one. I've lost all my adrenaline now, so I'll be targeting the head just to get the best damage. It is kind of annoying sometimes when their animations get them out of the way of uh, whatever shots you're doing. But the same thing's been happening since Fallout 4. Sort of aim for the crotch area and you'll never miss. But it's always worth taking a few extra shots at the head if they're sitting still. Super mutants do like to sit still in this place, so um, see, look at that. There's a whole lot of easy headshots there. So much so that I killed him with lag when he died. Alright, one more bloke apparently. With a bit of burst firing on his head, seems to do him well. Bullet check, uh, 1700. So yeah, I better watch my bullet usage next because um, I don't want to run out of bullets too quickly. But you all know we're going next, we're going to kill some ghoulies. Alrighty, so here we are outside the ghoulies to preserve some of our ammunition. We're again going to be throwing plasma grenades at the cars here just to wake all of the mad ghouls up. Apparently everything's exploding around me. Hopefully that's got them all woke now, so let's get started on these ghouls. Let's see, what have we got down here? Yep. They're out and about, alright. They're, they're killing all the rad roaches. They blame the rad roaches for the cars exploding, but um, let me tell you something, ghouls. That's that's not who's to blame. So now that we've shifted the blame onto ourselves, we'll go ahead and sort of backpedal away and get them through the choke point as usual. We don't have all the explosions to bounce off the wall, and also our mag size is going to be uh, short in lifespan because uh, this thing does fire so fast. But as you can tell, 
It only takes a couple of bullets to kill ghouls, which means we're going to kill them very, very quickly. The TTK to this, when you get the um, adrenaline up and running, is absolutely amazing. And the fact that, again, you can get these bullets, the bullet hose on demand, is really good stuff too. I don't know why this ghoul has decided to... Okay, he's, he's booking it out of there. I don't know what kind of ghoul he is, but um, maybe he's a smart one because he's running away from the mad woman in power armor with a giant LMG in her hands. Alright, there's another one dead. We'll just run in straight now. No point in hiding outside the door. Almost done with the ghouls. Anyway, I'm confident that we might be done at this point. We haven't seen the boss, so who is it going to be today? Is it going to be the master himself? He probably doesn't exist as the master just yet but I think we're about clear for this place so yeah ghoulies had a valiant fight but um in the end they were no match for my superior bullet hosing skills so there you have it in crowd control situations big surprise this thing can do pretty well just watch those 308s we're down to 1300 damn it okay I forgot to kill the manager <laughs> His head popped off in the giblets. That was weird. Something's wrong with this weapon. It makes it makes all the giblets lag. I'm gonna try to test this at a more of a medium range against one. I guess though it's not going to be as hard to miss him since it's such a large target. But we'll still kill him anyway. We'll do a little bit of micro bursting. They're all sneak attack critical, so. That was actually pretty efficient, like, for this weapon. You could, probably could have done it in, like, two or three shots if you had, like, a good hunting rifle on you. But still, not too bad out of the Furious Light Machine Gun. You know where we're going next. It's time to make some crab sticks. Okay, it's the crabby crustacean crunching hour thing. So we're going to go around killing them, just as usual. We'll gather up some of our adrenaline before taking on the queen. And yep, when you do a critical and that's with that, that's what it's like. And ooh, they're up in my grill. That's okay. That's kind of exactly where you want them to be with this weapon. Because up close and personal is what this thing excels at. It's kind of like a shotgun. Except instead of shooting little pellets, it shoots, little, it shoots big bullets. One by one. It's almost like it's a machine gun of some description. Anyways. We'll move on to whatever glowing my luck lives around here. And once again, we'll check that damage. 39 at 60% adrenaline. And wake the queen up somehow. Usually a grenade gets her up and about. There she is. And she's diseased too. Hopefully she doesn't hit me because I really don't want to deal with the blight right now. In danger. Um, I think her acid spits actually give her a little bit of, um, I mean, you can, she can transfer diseases with the acid spit, I think. Just like you can get the acid, or the, the flap them good. I've already got fucking Mylurk AIDS anyway, so I guess it didn't really matter. Did I just blow her head off? Oh, nice. Well, there you go. This thing really means business when you're taking out Krabby dudes, even though I kind of didn't go as well as I could have there. Going up close and personal is obviously the way to run this, but still, you can do well if you back off a little bit and just microburst the shit out of it. It's like Battlefield 3 tactics here. Okay, we'll move on to a Scorch Beast. Alrighty, so at any moment, the Scorch Beast is going to pop into existence, probably right in my face, immediately getting me into the fight. Well, we are in caution, and just like usual, we'll wait for an opportune moment to strike, and then we'll get stuck into him. I like how this thing doesn't jam on you. You can microburst it as much as you like. She's never going to jam on you, which is pretty good. And there goes our action points. Uh, yeah, so using that bat tactic against a Scorch Beast is uh, going to be not as viable as you would find it with regular rifles. Also, apparently these guys are being looked at right now from Bethesda. Uh, hello, gun zombie. Yes, I'm going to kill you for adrenaline, and I'm going to have no shame in doing that. So I'm going to wait until it gets a little bit closer. But I think one of the things I read is that they actually, they're going to make these guys have like a 10 second cooldown time with their scream attack. So players aren't constantly bombarded by their screams. Maybe what they'll do to give it a little bit of a kick is they'll actually make it do quite a bit of damage. So when you see a thing screaming, you just run for cover. Because the explosions means you can't really fucking see anything, which is a huge problem when you're trying to fight them without the use of that. If they're constantly screaming in your face, you can't even see them. There's screen shake. Like, it's subtle screen shake, but yeah. 
especially in low light conditions when it is night, you'll find that they completely blind you, so maybe that's a good fix. Maybe if they just changed the explosion effect too, that'd be good. But maybe making them scream about half as fast as they usually are, because I don't want Scorch Beast to be pushovers, then any old idiot with any dodgy build can kill them quickly. I want there to be a skill gap, goddammit, or at least a build gap where there's like different builds that do different things and then you only can do well if you've actually built it properly, you know what I'm saying? Let's see some skill injected into Fallout 76 and with all of those dead Scorch dudes, I think we'll call it a video there. So we're almost out of bullets, we've only got what, 159 left in reserves in a whole full mag, so yeah. Looks like I estimated the amount of bullets I'd be using with this perfectly, or either that or as luck. I spent like a couple of hours trying to farm the goods to get this, but apparently all of the lead and steel tin can reserves were taken, so um, yeah. I was lucky enough to actually get this thing to work with the entire video, but I'm going to have to put this on the shelf or any other um, throw eight firing weapons on the shelf for a while but before I can gather ammo and actually do it again. So if you'd like to see more of this, let me know. It will take time to rebuild my resources or rebuild my 308 supplies. So yep, if you'd like to see this thing in your game, you better go farm some legendaries or you could probably find it off Market 76. If you've got the caps, people will give it to you, as simple as that. Thank you for watching, guys.